Well, thank you very much indeed, Jackie. You, you used the term passion right at the beginning of your address, and that, it's quite evident to me that there's uh, passion. So, uh, first of all, can I thank Comic Advising Friends of Earth Scotland uh, for an invitation to speak today, and uh, it's the man living in good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is John Finney, I'm uh, one of the regional industries for the Highlands and Islands, and um, I'm also a citizen of the Highlands and Islands, and it's because of that I became aware of this um, application. Now, uh, despite this bundle of papers, and I forgot all the main ones I meant to take, um, I'm not an expert in any of these um, matters, technical matters, we're blessed with having experts here, but I'm going to talk in the politics of it. Now, this politics is important, and I don't mean the party politics. It would be very disappointing if this became a party political issue. Extremely disappointing. What political scientists will tell you is there's two categories of people. There's insider groups and there's outsider groups when it comes to influencing governments. And let me say that, for instance, the oil and gas industry are very much an insider group. And with the greatest respect, Comrade Ryan and Friends of Air Scotland, and I suspect everyone in this room, um, perhaps apart from the Comrade Firth's um, representatives, um, are outsider groups. So we have to use people power to influence things. And um, fairly early on, um, uh, Brenna, who worked with me, put together a Facebook page in support of this. I would like to say it's one of many. This is a community effort. This isn't about any individual, any particular community. It's been highlighted. This affects the whole of the Murray Firth area, um, and that's very important. What's also important is relationships, and the relationship between the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency and the Scottish Government, the relationship between um, Maritime Scotland and the Scottish Government. Um, clearly, clearly, it's quite correct that um, from the Firth Authority are obliged to make an application towards a reserved UK body. But it's also the case very clearly that the Scottish Government has responsibility for uh, maritime matters as well. So, um, when I first became involved in this um, in December of last year, um, or at the turn of this year indeed, um, I wrote to a number of councillors, and see Councillor Craig Fraser here, and Craig's been very active. I have to say that's not the norm. Most of my letters to elected representatives went completely unanswered. Two or three were answered. One said, well, it's nothing to do with me, because um, um, I think with one eye to the future, of what they thought might be seen as a, a, a negative involvement. But I, I did get some interesting replies. I got a reply from the leader of the uh, SNP group, Highland Council, who told me, and I quote, I understand from Scottish Government, one of our MP, MPs in the SNP, that this licence is the support of the SNP Government. Now, I thought that was very significant. Uh, I have to tell you that there are various ways of undertaking scrutiny. One of the ways I use is parliamentary questions. That's uh, written questions, so you can all go online and see what Kate, myself and others um, ask. I have to say I'm generally underwhelmed by the response I get to parliamentary questions. It seems to be, first and foremost, uh, an unwillingness to engage using that process. So frustrated was I two years ago that I actually posed this question to the Scottish Government. You have to frame it in a certain way. And this isn't about party politics. And I said to ask the Scottish Government what plans, if any, it has to gauge the satisfaction of MSPs with responses it provides to parliamentary questions. I actually got an answer to that one. They had no plans, funnily enough. But I mention that because there are a number of there are a number of things that are at play here, and one of them is a disappointing unwillingness for the Scottish Government to become involved in this. Now they are involved in it. Some of you will be aware that there was a, a, a NATO exercise off the west coast of Scotland recently, and I asked I asked the Scottish Government, and hopefully this is one of the questions I did manage to bring with me. Um, what risk assessment had been done to the environmental consequences of that. And the reply I got from Ms Cunningham was, all matters related to the defence of the United Kingdom that remain the direct responsibility of the United Kingdom government. This includes naval exercises fall within the responsibility of the Ministry of Defence. As the competent authority, the Ministry of Defence has responsibility for undertaking any appropriate environmental assessments under the relevant EU directives and UK legislation. Now, that may be a correct form of words, but it's definitely an issue, and it's what's happening again here with this issue. So I went back and I had the opportunity to ask an oral question. Um, and um, basically, Ms. Cunningham doesn't know if there were any environmental assessments undertaken, but she'll find out. And if the UK government will agree to them being released to me, she'll give them to me. 
Well, I could have told her, of course, that uh, SAMS, the, the Scottish Indian Research Laboratory at Oban, actually undertook a series of environmental assessments sponsored, sponsored um, by, uh, uh, effectively, the defence industries. Um, and I've, I've asked them, I've asked them a whole lot of questions where we told what you could and couldn't sample, we told what you could and couldn't, and I got a comprehensive response, actually, within a few days. So we need openness about that. The reason I tell you all that is we need openness about this, and I'm disappointed. So if I tell you, and some of you will remember, the enthusiasm there was in the Highlands of Scotland in 2007 to resist a similar proposal for the Firth of Forth. Now, the then Cabinet Secretary said, if there is a scintilla of suggestion of environmental damage, that will be opposed. Now that's the same Cabinet Secretary for the Rural Affairs and Environment that said in relation to a question asked by um, my colleague Dave Thompson, which I hope to find somewhere in here, um, that I quote, um, so you can sense even I get frustrated talking about parliamentary questions, never mind reading them out to you. He concludes by saying this is a reserve matter. Well, it's not a reserve matter. The protection of the environment in Scotland is a responsibility of the Scottish Government. And they have to stand up to plate and accept that. Now, Jackie's entirely right to say this is an entirely new process. And there's a significant misrepresentation of what's gone on before. What's gone on before is ships tied, one of them to the quay, one of them tied to the, the mother-daughter, as they refer to it, side by side, in the relative safety. Because nothing's without its risks. And it's not that none of us are risk averse. What you do is you assess the risks and you put in place steps to ameliorate these risks. That takes place with the transfer of risks and the relative security of a harbour area tied to the key. Now, I'm no scientist and I know somewhere I said that the wind blew in the wrong direction or whatever, but it seems apparent to me that any undertaking on the open sea is entirely different from the security of a harbour. That immediately increased the case of this. Now, thanks are also due to the, uh, the change they've done the port of Cromarty Firth, because they gave me early sight of this. They sent me an email the other day, and I was very grateful to the, the, the woman that sent me early sight of it, just to let you know it's coming out. And I was very impressed with the photos. I thought they're nice and shiny, very nice glossy, glossy brochure. But I have to say, just as Jackie said, it actually poses more questions than it answers many of them, it, because it's full of general statements. And we don't live in a world where 250 litres of oil, which from memory is one of the examples of it, has no impact. Everything has an impact in the environment. And what's particularly offensive is the fact that um, air quality is not being considered. Air quality, as anyone will know, is a significant killer across the world. And the fact that it wouldn't be a factor in, in any of the deliberations is, is deeply disappointing. So, um, and I don't know how much longer I have, Jackie. 30 seconds, that's good. Well, um, that's good. <laughs> the, yeah, uh, the reality of the situation is that it is people power that matters. I, I would encourage you to um, write to your elected representatives and encourage them. I would ask you to write to the Scottish Government and say, please, please accept. Good grief. I'm, I'm on the same, exactly the same page when it comes to wanting additional powers. And you know, to wait to the day after the issue closes and then say, we weren't asked. Well, thousands of folk weren't asked directly, but they still managed to sign petitions and participate in, in community events. So, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not for one minute suggesting that the Scottish Government doesn't care for the Indian environment. I'm suggesting that there are challenges, whether that's dealing with the Ministry of Defence, whether that's a disappointing and continuing relationship with the oil and the gas industry. You know, we need to move things away. I'm not going to stay into party politics, but the reality is that we need to be moving to decommissioning rather than more of the same. And the reality is, again, that 200,000 jobs, evidence support, 200,000 jobs by 2030 with that. So there are, there are confusing messages coming out from this. The one thing that's clear is the community don't want this. So I would urge you, excuse me, to continue your support uh, for traumatising Friends of the Earth and all the other groups and make it very clear that they don't want this and I'll very happily lend my support to that. More in time.